Good afternoon, I'm Dennis Kalucky, and welcome to the 442nd Imagine Greater Buffalo program and another virtual Imagine lecture hosted by our wonderful Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. There's over 60 of these virtual programs and you can find them on their YouTube site. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, this program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History, and Nature, and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. Now, we're going to start with our speaker shortly, but first, a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted during our speaker's presentation. If you have a question, please type it into the chat box, and we'll get to as many as we can. This program is being recorded. So you will be able to watch it again later on the Downtown Central Library's Facebook page and YouTube channels. And we hope you share the link with your friends and networks. Today, we're doing something a little different. This is the Imagine series. So it's only fitting that we celebrate the 50th anniversary of John Lennon's song, Imagine. Joining us to discuss this song and its lyrics are local cultural experts, Anthony, Tony Bannon, and David Granville. Tony Bannon served as executive director of the Birchfield, Art, uh, Birchfield Penny Art Center, as well as director of the George Eastman House. He has lectured at many uh, colleges, museums, and festivals worldwide and also spent nearly 20 years as a journalist at the Buffalo News. David Granville is a familiar face, having appeared on the Imagine series previously to discuss, to, uh, discuss some of Buffalo's public art works. He served as director of the Buffalo's Public Arts Commission from 1994 until 2003 and currently works with the Buffalo Municipal Housing Authority. Now, before we begin our discussion, let's listen and watch John Lennon's Imagine. Melissa? But I'm not 
David, take it away. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we're so pleased to be invited, Dennis, to this occasion and thanks for, to Cezanne for all you do for lifelong learning. If I notice everyone is silenced, but if you're familiar with Zoom, there are uh, reactions. And if I could just show, have by a show of hands, anyone who has never heard this song before, anyone please indicate that by raising your thumb or indicating, and I see that we're all quite familiar you know, the next time we may have the pleasure of hearing this is on New Year's Eve if we all stay up late enough to watch the ball drop in New York and at least on ABC after New York, New York. This is the song that is played and people are rocking in the cold, huddled masses, singing along to this song. And Maybe you noticed during that video, you noticed that well-clothed people smoking, you know, in the in the late 70s there while they listened to this. Maybe you noticed the the people perhaps then hearing it for the first time. And and that's why we're so happy to have this video to share. You may have also heard that John Lennon himself edited his own song so that after and no and nothing to kill or die for and no immigration to <laughs> rather than the word religion he adds a word immigration and then just to he only had nine years to live with this song we are so fortunate we live 50 years with this song he was he was you know killed in in after after 5 years of 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 silence you know he he vowed the first 5 years of his son Sean's life he and Yoko would stay under the radar and and here comes his double fantasy album and he is killed right off of central park at the dakota and and so think about, he only had nine years to watch the world adore this, this song. He only, but we have had 50. And, and uh, Dennis, I want to thank you for inviting a maestro, Tony Bannon, because, you know, I refer to him as maestro and he has conducted the Eastman House in Rochester and he's conducted the Birchfield Penny. He added the name Penny to the Birchfield Art Center. I was there the day that he had Charles Rand Penny bring. Now, if if Anthony Bannon is not a person that epitomizes imagination, uh, thank you for inviting both of us. And I'm going to turn it over to Anthony for his initial remarks. Well, thank you. It's a it's a pleasure to to uh, to be here. Uh, listening to the song, seeing uh, seeing John Lennon, um, it um, it occurs to me it's a it's a like a lullaby. It's a simple little song, isn't it? It's uh, three verses, um, a chorus, uh, twenty six lines, one hundred and thirty words, um, acceptance idealism, peace, a contemplative behavior of um, living in the moment. It's um, uh, what can, what can you, um, uh, what can you argue with it? Um, you know, I, I, I was thinking back when you invited me to, to do this, well, what, what else was going on at this time? And it, um, uh, there was, uh, the the life was of the world is coming unglued. There's the, um, of course, the troubles in Vietnam, but the troubles in Belfast also. The British army is searching 
every Catholic house um, looking for insurgents and weapons. Um, My Lai, the massacre that killed 22 in Vietnam uh, was in 1968, but William Kelly was jailed that year. Um, a half a million people marched in Washington against the war. Uh, Nixon ignored it, uh, arrested a bunch, but 60% in the country were against the war. Joe Frazier beat Muhammad Ali in Madison Square Garden. The world surely was coming unglued. Charles Manson was convicted. And um, Helter Skelter by the Beatles was played during the trial uh, because Manson uh, said that it was the theme song. What a replacement is, is this song, Imagine. Um, I don't know that, um, that Lennon could do much um, he didn't have much wiggle room, you know, it was just about a year before in which um, uh, McCartney said that, he, uh, no, he wasn't going to write again with Lennon uh, just before the formal uh, dissolve of the Beatles. But, um, but Lennon took a year. Um, Harrison released a single, My Sweet Lord. McCartney, um, a single declaring another day, Ringo, it don't come easy. And the last um, to release was, um, was Lennon with, um, with Imagine. It, um, it, I, I wonder um, about the uh, those in the audience and their experience with the song. That is, when was the first they heard it or when when was the song, um, uh, when did the song take them by surprise? I can, I, I can say that um, for, my, for myself, it was 20 years later when I was working on an exchange program for State University in Riga. It's still, the Soviet Union was still in place the head of the Academy of Fine Arts in Riga, Latvia, uh, invited um, Frank Eckmeyer and, and myself to, uh, to lunch. We, we were there to discuss. It was in the government um, um, club uh, where guests would be received. I bet we were the only Americans. There weren't very many people there, but... Um, here the, here the head of the Latvian Academy is talking about a meeting that was held the night before in the basement of the Academy in which representatives from the Balkan states were discussing uh, leaving the Soviet Union, breaking from the Soviet Union. And I thought, oh my God, there, there, there must be hidden speakers. This is, this is it. Um, the, we're going to be hauled off by the, um, by the, by the police. Uh, to the contrary, uh, someone uh, uh, put on the, as background music this song. Can you imagine? Here we are in the Soviet Union and imagine with its um, call for peace and acceptance, change, idealism. That comes over the loudspeaker. I thought, okay, I guess everything's all right. After all, some insurgent in the kitchen has just put this song on and... Um, it looks like we're going to be okay, uh, but what a statement! What a statement of the uh, of the change in time. And um, is David? Is this is this the opportunity we have to ask um, folks uh, who are with us uh, what they might have to say about the song? Well, we could do that, Tony, uh, Melissa. Uh, uh, if you, I'll invite people to at least make any observations in the chat box. Uh, I, I told uh, uh, you would I, I would just offer my own short reflection uh, to get us started. Um, but it struck me Saturday uh, as I watched the uh, what 10, 15 minute uh, blue origin space flight uh, where we take people to the edge of space and uh, uh, and then land and and their excitement at seeing the earth, uh, from that altitude. And I, I, I thought, 
uh, John Lennon in 71 uh, had to be incorporating uh, the first images that we got in the late 60s of Earth from space as one entity. Uh, uh, no lines for countries, uh, no sense of different religions, uh, no sense of consumers uh, purchasing uh, things, just a view of this blue planet, blue green planet in the middle of blue white green, uh, in the middle of black darkness. Uh, and I, and I, I thought that might have been part of his inspiration. I certainly don't know that uh, for a fact, but it seems to make sense. It certainly has inspired uh, people like Jeff Bezos to try to get people up there and see it and then maybe have a different attitude towards the planet. So I'll throw that in the mix of discussion for what it's worth. Melissa, have we gotten some comments perhaps that uh, uh, our audience, uh, uh, you know, have reflections they might have? Yes, um, here's one comment. Every time I hear the song, it takes on a different meaning. I would consider this to be the most important song of the last century and now this century. Hmm. Thank Overlaps you. Both. Overlaps Thank both. Overlaps you. both. Yeah. Interesting. Go yeah. ahead. Continue yeah. on, guys. We've got, we've got time. So uh, as you talk, I'm sure you'll inspire others. And Melissa will let us know. Uh, we'll break in to get any questions that uh, we might There is one more comment. John okay. Lennon. John Lennon has become bigger than life because of Imagine. But the, in that in that same year, um, uh, nineteen seventy one, if I'm not mistaken, the um, the film Let It Be, Michael Lindsay Hogg's um, film, uh, uh, just just prior to the announcement that was created just prior to the announcement of the dissolution of the Beatles um, made it made an odd counterpart um, because that what I remember of that movie was that um, um, it, it hung like a shroud over over the fact that the Beatles didn't exist any longer and Yoko Ono is lurking about um, in the film a kind of harbinger um, the um, there and Lennon ends it with a with a, a kind of cynical um, or at least um, difficult to understand comment. He says he said I hope we pass the audition. It's the last if, if I'm correct. That's the last words in the film. I hope we pass the audition. Well, of course that was the end of it. Um, not the uh, not at all the beginning of it. But maybe we pass the audition for whatever it is that that was going to come. That is their their life um, uh, as solo artists, not um, any longer as um, as a group. But the lingering um, the the lingering hope is certainly in the in the song, isn't it? For uh, for the hope uh, that we could live as one was what was said of the Beatles, wasn't it? That um, that they were four individuals, but they acted as as if they were one, one, one entity, one group. Of the Beatles. We do have a few more comments, um, so I think I'll chime in now with these. One is, I love all the lyrics, but the sentence "sharing all the world" is so meaningful to me, and I'm sure to many others. All the lyrics are meaningful. And then someone else said, it is a haunting and beautiful song. Thank you for your comments. You may have heard him also add the words, a brotherhood and sisterhood of man in that version we listened to. So he was being inclusive and, and your comments and sensitivity to the message of the song he also gives a lot of credit uh, to his Yoko Ono, not only for inspiring the song, but then eventually, and just a couple years ago, she is credited as co-author of the song. And 
Um, the song is in the key of C, the plainest and simplest scale. No sharps or flats. <laughs> this, um, this period um, was an extraordinary one. Um, I was writing for the, for the Buffalo News at that time. And um, when David asked if I would join him, I, uh, I looked back to see um, what was going on in Buffalo. And it was the most extraordinary um, polyglot of, um, of events. Um, the Studio Arena Theater was doing um, uh, masterpiece work with um, the Truman Capote and, um, and also uh, there was a, a play with Joe Dunn and um, and Samuel Beckett that um, that 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 occurred. The music scene was uh, was unbelievable. The the the, the ranking of people uh, who uh, lived in, within this community as as if um, it were one one event for extraordinary creativity that um, received visitors from from out of town and did so into a, an environment in which uh, people were uh, collaborating um, most uh, extraordinarily. I, I, I thought maybe I was making it up, you know, that this was uh, the kind of view uh, looking through um, a telescope backwards um, down, the ch down the tunnel of time. And uh, my my notion of what an extraordinary period it was was um, was idealized, but gosh, I went through the the clippings of the stories that I had written, and I was staggered by the by what was going on. And and as a counterpart, there there also is um, the rush across the border of uh, deserters and dodgers escaping uh, Vietnam. Um, so what a, what a counterpart, um, enormous creativity, but at the same time, um, that, uh, that terrible cloud of Vietnam and, and also the, the, the troubles in other nations around the world, most often precipitated by, um, by religion. Um, I remember um, Ted Sorensen speaking um, he was in Kennedy's cabinet. Um, no, he was his speechwriter, I think, Sorensen was. And uh, I remember him speaking about um, how most of the um, embattlements around the world were based in religion. He had a number, something like 23 out of 27 wars, um, for we were in a worldwide war. Um, and, and religion, to Lenin's point, was certainly... Uh, one of the bases for it. Melissa, any other comments coming in from our audience? There is one more comment. Please. It's a testament to the genius of John Lennon that the lyrics are as relevant today as they were when he first wrote them 50 years ago, maybe even more so. Thank you. You may say I'm a dreamer. He's a dreamer. In the video, John Lennon sings the, the, the words. And then as if he's heckling himself, those people in the tuxedos and nightgowns, smoking and drinking as silent as they were, hearing the song for the first time. You may say I'm a dreamer. You're a dreamer. And he turns back. Yes, I am. Yes, we are. You are all, we are all dreamers. We are all inspired, not by the controversy, the debate of whether there's a heaven or if there's countries, but to live in the eternal now, to, 
to live in the moment, as Anthony was saying, a lullaby, a ballad well, you... that, that lulls us into the peace that we need. Uh, you know, I wonder if there's not a sadness to the song, too. I mean, the fact that, um, that, that one needs to point or one feels pressed to point um, for a desire, um, uh, to a, a desire to establish a spirit of peace and acceptance of change and idealism um, uh, in, indicates that uh, with a kind of sadness that the world does not live as one. I'm not so sure we would want to live as one. I, mean, I think diversity is, is certainly more interesting than, than, a, um, than an amalgam in which every, everyone is the, um, in some ways the same, but he's not, that, that's not the point. I, I, I think it is, um, it's more to the point that if, if, if one, if we are one living as if in a, in, in a family, um, a peaceful family in, in, um, that, uh, that we, that, that we might have, um, the, the life that we desire. Um, he's not, um, chasing, I think, organized, uh, he is chasing organized religion. I don't think he, he, he as a matter of fact, I believe he said that, uh, it wasn't religion that he was arguing with for he was a spiritual, um, person to be sure, but in, instead, um, the difficulties that can be caused by the kind of hegemony that, um, that organized anything, um, ultimately seems to precipitate, uh, whether it's the organization of a nation or of a, or of an ethnicity or of a style of life. Uh, finally, it, it has to draw lines, doesn't it? it, it exclude some and include others. And maybe um, that's not the best way to go. Maybe it is uh, better that we, that, that, that we try to find a way to live in peace. In David Bowie's cover of this, he changes the words and says, you may call me a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Uh, the view of the earth, the great blue marble, in, you know, in the sky. We are one. We are one living here and sharing this planet. And so we hope someday you'll join us. <laughs> Tony, I know you are a... Uh because I heard you give a presentation at Chautauqua some years ago on Thomas Merton, and, uh, and you alluded to the spirituality of John Lennon. Uh, and, and I remember Merton uh, having that observation of interconnectedness uh, that, that uh, I think he was on a street corner in some, uh, some New York uh, town, maybe Binghamton, something like that, Ithaca. Louisville. Uh, where, where was Louisville. It? Yep. Louisville. 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 Yep. And, uh, and just came to the sense how everything was connected and he in turn was connected with everything. And, it, and it, it was something to that degree, maybe not those exact words, but I think that was the sentiment. Could you comment? Well, I wonder if Merton, um, that, that would be fun to see if Merton uh, had any connection with Lennon. Um, the, uh, the the connection with L Lenin and uh, and other idealists that um, I've just finished uh, writing about the the Beat Generation um, is is profound. The um, uh, there there are connections through uh, through um, the idea of change and change readiness. That is. Uh, not being in a position in which you're looking uh, for the reconfirmation of the status quo, but instead looking to be in circumstances in which change is invited and we're, we're placed in a circumstance where, golly, I don't know what's going on, but it uh, sure is interesting. Um, that, that readiness for change, uh, a search behavior actually for, for, for change and all that change might might bring the, with it the necessity for it for acceptance and a and a peaceful attitude that 
that that is one of the the marks of the beat generation when Kerouac named um, together with several uh, of his colleagues named it named the, uh, the their group the beat group the beat generation he he was shortening the attitude the the attitudes contained in the B attitudes, the beat attitude. And that's the, that's the name of the book, um, uh, the attitude colon, the beat attitude that'll be out in the, uh, in the summer. Uh, you know, I don't know about any connection between Lennon and Merton, though there is connection between Merton and the beats. And, and I wouldn't doubt that there would be a connection between Merton and Lennon. I don't know about it. It'd be fun to look into it. I was simply pointing to the, 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 the journey of spirituality. As people go on that journey, they, they, they may or may not know each other, but they, uh, uh, it certainly reminded me of. That's what I think Lennon's song uh, is, is, is about a spiritual journey uh, as much as uh -huh. Seeing everything connected as one. Good point. Nicely done. Well, uh, and and with that, uh, our our time is uh, nicely done too. We're we're uh, right within schedule. This has been very special, guys. Uh, David, I invited uh, uh, first bounce the idea off of you. You you uh, bought into it and said, "Let me see who else I can uh, get to join me." And he invited you, Tony, and. We're so glad uh, that you did. Um, and uh, uh, it, it's an interesting song. It, it certainly was part of the inspiration uh, for me uh, starting something called an Imagine series uh, mm -hmm. that we could look at Buffalo uh, and maybe just uh, uh, bring all the different pieces together, the, uh, the, create, the arts and creativity, the uh, uh, architecture, the design, uh, looking backwards, the history, so we could imagine looking forward, nature, science, bring those together uh, on a platform. Uh, this becomes the 12th anniversary of that. It was started in December of 2009. So I certainly need to thank the library uh, staff that has uh, labored uh, on this program to make it possible. Uh, well, Joy, Dennis, let, Joy, me, let, let me just name these names, if I could. Yeah. Joy Testa uh, Cinquino, uh, Melissa Burgess, Leah Mosier, uh, and certainly uh, Ann Connable that said yes to the idea back in 2009, in the fall of 2009. Tony, could you add to that? Yeah, Dennis, I'd like to, I'd like to throw a bouquet to you. Um, the, um, for it's not so much the... Um, uh, the the uh, sum of twelve years, but it um, that that is one event or another event or another event. But it's the presence that you've established to to look at um, our traditions and try to establish. After all, what is the culture of this um, this place called Western New York or Metro Buffalo? And you've done a great job to uh, to do that. It, it, and it's not, I, I just like to stress, it, it, it's, it's about your showing up over and over and over again. How many are, how many of these have there been, Dennis? Well, four, 441, uh, uh, 442, 40, this is the 42nd. <laughs> yeah, so, so by, by that weight, through that, that presence, you you certainly have done an awful lot, and uh, with the, with the platform of the of our public library uh, to create and help us understand what is our culture and to know um, how we might uh, change with our times to um, to make a place that is um, worth living and uh, worth living in with the, with the kind of idealism that uh, that we have heard today from John Lennon. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, I appreciate that, Tony. I, I, I have to wrap it up. You saw at the beginning of the program, uh, the introductions, there was an image, a, a thank you to the two of you guys. And uh, uh, I, the library makes that up. That's an image I've used right along. 
Uh, it, it, uh, you, you may or may not be familiar with it. It's in the uh, what used to be called the Gold Dome. It's officially the Buffalo Savings Bank. Now it's M&T Fountain Plaza. But if you walk in the uh, revolving door into that E.B. Green building, you'll see four murals uh, uh, as you approach the dome uh, looking up. And the one uh, that you immediately see shows what Buffalo was like in the 1920s. That's when the murals were painted 20, some 25 years after the building was built. Uh, but the, the, it shows power. Uh, we had uh, Niagara Falls. We, the, this made us pretty special. Uh, we had uh, commerce. And you see these ships all in the Buffalo Harbor. And uh, then you see industry all up and down the Buffalo River. And you realize those three elements really disappeared. Uh, the sense of cheap power, the, uh, the, the industry turned into brownfields, the, uh, the boats are now replaced by uh, sailboats. Uh, but, uh, but the one above the revolving door is that image of the arts, of the arts. And it showed Olmsted's design and a collage of the cultural institutions. That was my inspiration for this Imagine program. Those culturals, and just think of what we're talking about today. Uh, a song with words, a poem almost set to music. Uh, and, and, and here we are talking about it and humming it uh, 50 years later and I, 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 I'd put a nickel or two on the idea that 50 years and well beyond that, people will be humming and talking about perhaps what it means. And that's all this program was, just to maybe stir that thought uh, that it's uh, not just a catchy tune, um, but a, uh, a meaningful group of words, uh, artistic words. And, uh, and to value that is, is to appreciate it all the more, I, I believe. And, You've added, guys, you've, you've added a great deal to that, to that discussion to me. So my thanks, thanks. my thanks yeah. to you both. All right. Thanks, David. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, everybody. There you go, David. Hey, folks, uh, we're going to uh, let the library staff have a couple of weeks off for the holidays. Uh, so we will return the first Tuesday of January. We're going to have Jesse Fisher. And it's, uh, she's the executive director of Preservation Buffalo, Niagara. But it's a uh, most meaningful uh, moment, I feel. This is, um, I see if you can see this. Uh, there you go, uh, maybe, there it goes. This is, uh, uh, this will open this Thursday at the uh, Lipsy Architecture Center, uh, which we've all been uh, waiting for but it's a lenses exhibit uh, and uh, Jesse will be describing that. It'll be going from December 16th through April 10th. Uh, and uh, we, uh, I think many in Buffalo want to uh, certainly see the space and the exhibit. It's going to reimagine uh, the 1940 exhibit uh, that was at the Albright Knox. So they're a partner in this, but add new, uh, new phot uh, photographs uh, from others that uh, weren't in that 1940 uh, exhibit uh, showing Buffalo and the architecture. Uh, so it's, uh, I think, a mo an important moment in our uh, cultural history uh, and our memory uh, of Buffalo. It'll help us better imagine where we're going to look back at that exhibit. So hope you can uh, perhaps see it during the holidays uh, and then tune in again on the first Tuesday I think that's the 4th of January, uh, 2022. So folks, thank you so much for joining us, making this program possible because you show up. Uh, we'll do our part uh, because you are doing your part as well. So thanks, uh, wish you all the best of uh, Christmas holidays uh, and New Year's. Um, be well, be safe. Have Happy New Year. Dennis, we just wanted to, to thank everyone on behalf of the library and of course thank you very much Dennis as well for continuing to host this uh, in this new virtual format and um, we hope everyone has a happy and safe holiday season and we'll see you everyone in the new year.
Thanks Thank so much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. David. Thank you, Maestro. Nice job. A Great mere job. flicker in your blaze of glory. Come on. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. Bravo. Yeah, well done. Well done by you. And it's recorded, that? so I'm going to send you the copy of the recording, Tony. The library will as well. And um, uh, I've got an audio recording that I'll send you as well. Oh my gosh. Imagine do wanna, that. Do I want to? <laughs> do I yes. want to? Yes, you do. Yes. Where, where are you off to? I'm going to Detondos. Why don't you meet me there? What's at Detondos? Oh, 